Football Reviewer channel. I am back. It is just after Christmas, and I hope you've all had a really lovely and amazing festive time. You are joining me here with Tiara in my living room. We have a roaring fire going on in the background. We have some, some cats dotted around. We've got Molly over there, who's on the chair right next to me. I've got my notebook full of notes of things that I want to talk about. And I thought that the topic of today should be, of course, if I just adjust my glasses so you can't see the glare. They are actually anti-glare glasses, but anyway. Um, I thought the topic should be today um, the new royal family Christmas. And of course, what we have seen since uh, Charles, Prince Charles, has of course ascended the throne and is now known as King Charles III. So what does the new royal family Christmas and Christmas Day look like? What did we see on the day? What did we see on the build-up? Um, and of course, this is a live chat, so I want to know what you guys thought about the new royal family Christmas. Um, but I do want to say, um, I hope you've enjoyed my Vlogmas on the other channel, Elliot and Matt. I will leave it linked. Um, I pretty much posted a video every single day on Elliot and Matt, and I was worn out. I really, really was. So I'm quite happy to be returning uh, to Royal News. And of course, um, being the return to this channel, there is going to be a lot more content coming on the channel. And I haven't quite decided exactly what form that is going to take. There's going to be a mixture, basically. It's going to be a mixture of things that make me happy about the royal family. So I'm going to be doing live chats. I'm going to be doing pre-recorded videos where I can show you photos of the things that I'm talking about. Um, I will be making some history videos. I will be doing wh whatever I feel like. Whatever I feel like doing, I will be doing. I will be doing question and answer sessions. I did um, a few days ago, was it yesterday or a couple of days ago, ask if there were any questions that you wanted me to answer or any topics. I will go and address those as well, um, as well as my own kind of notes. So I don't know. Oh, also, I may be doing something special on the channel as well, something that I've written. Um, I may also write some articles and record them as kind of audio visual shorter articles. I may be posting some more shorts in the short format content. We have cats running around. So if you hear any weird noises, it's cats. <laughs> not corgis there are no corgis in this house there but there are three cats um, so yeah the channel is going to come back i i'm not entirely sure on on the format or the time of the lives so it is important that you hit the notification bell so if i do pop up and do a live chat then um you know you will at least hopefully get the notification hello to everyone popping in i can see quite a few people um popping in uh, Twiller, who says the whole family wasn't together and so sad. We'll get to that in a moment. A lot of people are just waking up in different parts of the world. Tim, forgot about this channel, excuse me. How could you forget me and my tiaras? Uh, Kathy, I'm going to answer the Princess Anne question um, because I did notice her, her absence. I was looking for Princess Anne and she wasn't there. And we will answer why. Um, James Med 4, I will answer your question in a moment. We're going to get to the questions. So I'm going to get into this into this video. By the way, I am wearing, I've brought some of my tiaras from the old house to the new house. Uh, not all of them, but I do have a selection of some of my favourite tiaras. And this is one of my favourites. And it was also one of the late Queen's favourites, which is why I'm wearing it today. And it is, of course, uh, the Girls of Great Britain and Ireland tiara. I haven't shown this for a while, but it is a replica. Um, and like I said, it looks like little girls holding hands, uh, dancing, which is why it's known as the Girls of Great Britain and Ireland tiara. It's a very beautiful one. And I like wearing this one. Um, it's quite lightweight. It's easy to wear. And I think Her Majesty found it the same. And I can't wait to see Camilla <laughs> wearing lots of um, the Queen's uh, the, the, for the late Queen's tiaras. Now, to answer a question that you didn't ask me, but one that I've seen banded around social media quite a bit, is who is going to inherit the Queen's tiaras? Well, the simple answer is the King. <laughs> to cut a very long, long, faffily answer short, the King, um, unless anything was specifically bequeathed in the will uh, to anyone else, 
all of the Queen's jewellery that obviously are not um, the regalia of state, like the Imperial State Crown, the St. Edward's Crown, the Orb, the Scepter. All of those things are, are crown jewels. They belong to the state. Anything like the tiaras, the brooches, the pearls, that was, that was all the Queen's personal property. And they are inherited by her heir, which is, of course, um, now King Charles. So Charles owns all the tiaras, all the jewellery, unless anything was specifically bequeathed, which we do not know quite yet. Although we did see, I think, Princess Anne, uh, I think she was wearing a brooch that was known to be the Queen's. Um, so perhaps, you know, there are certain pieces that have been bequeathed. However, it's expected that the big pieces, like the tiaras, remain in the royal family collection, the private collection, and were inherited by Charles, unless we see otherwise. Now, of course, Charles is probably very unlikely to start wearing the tiaras. So um, that's normally the preserve or the reserve of, of the queen consort, which, of course, is Camilla. So Camilla will have her pick and choose and choice of wearing all the tiaras. And I can't wait to see uh, Camilla wearing the tiaras. Now, my reason for this is nothing to do with Camilla. It's to do with the actual jewels themselves. And I do like to think that the continuity of the jewels carries on and lives on in the new wearer, or I suppose the new bearer of the jewels, so to speak. And I think, you know, if you go back to the kind of Marilyn Monroe song, Diamonds Are Forever, diamonds, you know, and the royal family jewellery do not die when the previous in, in, holder of them um, passes. They, they live on and they are meant to be seen. They are meant to glisten. They are meant to sparkle. They are meant to be seen at royal occasions. So I am very happy to see brooches, tiaras, pearls, earrings being worn by other family members. So what's most likely now is that King Charles and Camilla, between them or separately, will decide upon who gets these jewels on long-term loan. So as we've seen um, from a previous uh, state banquet, uh, we, we haven't seen um, that uh, Catherine, the new Princess of Wales, has any new tiaras. I'd like to see her with some new tiaras, but she is still using the Cambridge Lovers Not tiara um, that she has previously worn before. Um, she also has the lotus flower tiara, which she kind of alternates. We haven't seen any big pieces of jewellery being um, long-term loaned to the Princess of Wales yet, although, you know, we might see that. Uh, we have seen Camilla wearing that beautiful, magnificent sapphire tiara of, of the late queens, and I thought that was really, again, lovely to see the continuity and the renewal through jewellery. It's almost like, you know, the, the, the queen lives on through her jewels. So that was really nice to see. I'm, again, I can't wait to see some of the brooches. The flower basket brooch is one of my favourites. I do have a replica of that. I also have the, the star brooch. That's another favourite. Um, so, so yes, I, I do love the continuity of the jewellery. If you note, if you haven't seen, I did do my annual uh, royal, royal style traditional Christmas message. So if you haven't seen that, do go check that out. It, it's the previous video to this on the channel. Um, and I did wear the Prince Albert brooch. Some of you may have spotted that with the pearls dangling. And I wore the, the flower basket brooch that it was hooked up to. So if you zoom in on the jewels that I'm wearing, they are royal family replicas. Um, of course, I had the sash and I had my, my replica that actually Lady Buckingham made, made the uh, royal family order um, bow. And then I put my replica Queen Elizabeth um, miniature portrait brooch on it to make it look like a royal family order. So all of the ju jewels that I wore in my Christmas message were very kind of poignant. Of course, I wrote the speech myself. So if you haven't heard that, do go back um, and look at that. Right, I did see a question that I wanted to answer straight away, and it was about Princess Anne. So she was not at church, and it was notable that she wasn't at church. Um, she had a cold, basically. Um, when I didn't see her, I knew that she was ill because, of course, Zara and Mike were there, Zara being um, Princess Anne's daughter, Mike being her husband. You might have remembered that he went on, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here, most recently. So I knew that if Anne wasn't there, but her children were, then it's likely that she was poorly. Now, whether or not she was at Sandringham being 
poorly, but just didn't walk to church, I don't know. Um, the likelihood is that if Zara and Mike were at Sandringham, then Princess Anne was probably there, but she just didn't make or feel up to or want to subject members of the public to whatever kind of cold or illness that she's got. There is a lot of bugs going around. I've had, I mean, from early December, I, I've had the, the sniffles and, yeah, it, it's not been very good. Lots of people have succumbed to lots of, you know, seasonal illnesses. And, of course, because we're all mixing now, all the seasonal illnesses are coming back. Princess Anne being the hardest working royal of 2022, that has now been confirmed. Of course, she meets so many different people on all of her engagements. So the likelihood is she's picked up a bug from one of her royal engagements, you know, when you, when you work really hard and you meet lots of people, then you subject yourself to all the bugs and illnesses. So, yeah, she was not there, but she might have still been at Sandringham. I'm just kind of pointing that out. Uh, we did, of course, uh, get to see lots of the royal family. I'm just making sure I haven't... Oh, I wanted to talk about the Christmas broadcast first. So King Charles's first Christmas broadcast, lots of, there was, of course, lots of speculation prior to it going out. And also, it got leaked. The actual message got leaked to a YouTube channel. Um, I have no idea how, but it did actually get leaked. And some people um, did get to see it prior to the day. But I watched it on the day at uh, 3 p.m. because, of course, that's the traditional time it goes out. And I was not going to cheat and watch it early. I wanted to see it at the time it went out. So it went out. It was recorded at um, St. George's Chapel, which, of course, is the chapel where the Queen's funeral was held. It was recorded close to, not on, but close to the spot where the coffin was lowered on the catafalque down. Uh, of course, the Queen is not down where she was lowered. She was moved to um, another chapel, uh, the King George VI Memorial Chapel. Um, so it was very poignant that it was recorded there, but I thought it was very kind of suitable and it kind of set the tone. The Christmas tree in the background um, had sustainable decorations on. And of course, the background was all blurry. So you couldn't, I mean, they could have put anything on the tree. They could have put chocolate bars on the tree. Nobody would have known. <laughs> all you got to see was the kind of shape and outline of a Christmas tree, uh, some pretty lights. And I have no idea what the decorations looked like because it was all blurry. But anyway, that was obviously a production choice. Uh, but it was nice to know that the tree was sustainable, of course, online and on brand with the kind of things that uh, ethics that King Charles has been pushing out for years and decades, of course, in his former existence as, as Prince Charles. Um, so I thought that was really, really nice. The message was criticised by a few people for being a bit political, but we'll get to that in a moment. Um, the main, of course, uh, point of this particular message, the centrepiece, was, of course, paying tribute to his late mother, and I thought he did that really well. Um, I think he got across kind of, you know, all the kind of emotions and thoughts that um, not only members of the family would feel, but also, um, also, you know, members of the public, not just in the UK, but of the Commonwealth and around the wider world as well. Uh, one of the things that I said in my Christmas message was that the Queen was a familial face on the world stage, not just for the UK, but for everybody, regardless of whether she was your queen or not. She was just this familial face that was always there. And King Charles is another familial face. He's been on the world stage um, for decades and decades and decades and around the Commonwealth and just the wider world. So he does offer this continuity that the queen also provided. And I think that is very, very important, regardless of whether you're a, Ch a Charles fan or not, it doesn't matter. It's still the continuity, it's still that familial face. And I used the phrase in an often discombobulated world. And I think at the moment, discombobulation is exactly what we are going through. Things are all sort of up in the air and not quite right. Things aren't quite right. Things aren't sort of, you know, pre a few years ago, you know, lots of things. There is, of course, the economic crisis, which is not just facing the UK, it's facing the world in general. And of course, Charles's message did reference uh, the public services, the hardworking public services, um, the public sector, um, and also the margin, marginalised people. 
um, on the fringes of society who are um, feeling the effects of what's going on in the world the hardest. Um, so I think that many people have taken that as being the direction of his next year of work. He is going to champion the marginalised. He will be visiting lots of hospitals, services, uh, you know, probably schools, you know, like I say, hospitals, uh, emergent, all the emergency services, anything that provides, um, again, more continuity um, in, in this discombobulated world. So I think that is the direction that he will go in. On the whole, I thought it was a really lovely first Christmas message. Um, the people that Chris, I'm just taking my slippers off, they are ugh. <laughs> my feet are getting a bit, a bit squished on the floor. Um, so a, a lot of people said that maybe he shouldn't have mentioned like or referenced the economic crisis because that's political. I think he would have been criticised if he hadn't referenced the hard times that people are going through, not just in the UK, but around the world. I think if he'd have glossed over it and, you know, everything's all lovely and, you know, rose tinted spectacles, I don't think that would have worked. So I think he actually hit the right tone. He referenced it without, you know, he didn't apportion blame. He didn't point, point his finger in any one direction. He just kind of championed those people that um, are helping people and recognise that there are difficulties in the world. And I think that was the right thing to do. I don't think it was overtly political. Um, you know, like I say, I think it would have hit, I think it, it would have, people would have said, you know, read the room if he hadn't mentioned it. So I think it was very important to mention it. So I'm okay with that. I don't think there was anything wrong with the King's speech. Um, I thought it was lovely. It featured um, clips of all the working royals in the family, uh, well, most of them, apart from maybe the, the Queen's cousins here and there, which are still working royals. Um, but yeah, he featured the, the key core working royals, you know, William and Catherine, the Wessexes, um, so Princess Anne. Um, so yeah, all the bases were covered. He didn't mention, of course, uh, Harry and Meghan. I don't think this, this uh, family message, Christmas message, was the right time to to mention that so yeah on the whole i think it was a really lovely um first christmas message let me look a little bit down um i did see a question from james med four who said will charles change the royal house name no because he is a windsor what would he change it to <laughs> no he is he is a windsor um so the house of windsor uh, does continue it's not going to be um it's not going to be the Parker Bowles dynasty. It's not going to be the, the Windsor Parker Bowles dynasty. Definitely not. No, it's going to continue to be the Windsor, the House of Windsor. Um, there we go. It's going down. I think, uh, Twilla, I have explained what the tiara is. It's the Girls of Great Britain and Ireland tiara. Hello to everyone. I'm not going to say hello individually because it will take too long, but I can see everyone um, there. Um, mm -hmm. yes, definitely, I am back. Uh, oh, uh, Mudtha, Mudita says, please tell us about Camilla and Charles's love son in Australia. Oh, that's old news, and definitely not, not their love child. Um, the, 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 there is someone in Australia who claims to be Charles and Camilla's love child. Definitely not. Um, Yes, the tiara is, I think, a favourite of lots of people. Um, Tim says, very sad not seeing the Queen on the walk. Right, uh, that was another uh, part of my notes. I've got it down as the Sandringham Christmas, Christmas Day walkabout. So, of course, Sandringham has not hosted the Royal Family Christmas for the last couple of years because of things that have been going on in the world. So it was nice to see the Royal Family back at Christmas. And of course, there was speculation over what Charles would do with some of the royal houses, Balmoral, Sandringham, um, Clarence House, Windsor Castle, Buckingham Palace. And it was nice to see that my suspicions were correct, that, that Sandringham would be kept as a private family home and used at important times such as Christmas. Now, of course, um, in the past, w Windsor has been, has been used for, for Christmases. Um, 
But it's nice to see it back at Sandringham. Sandringham and of course, William and Catherine, they have a home very close by on the estate and the hall. So they would have stayed there to free up some space in the main house. Um, and it was nice to see. I, I think this is where one of the notable differences between uh, the Queen and King Charles, um, Fergie, the uh, Sarah, Duchess of York, um, Andrew's ex-wife, she was invited to the actual dinner. Um, Fergie has been invited to Balmoral previously, although not staying in the castle when when Philip was alive. But she has been in, you know, she has been in the royal orbit. Um, and of course, the, the late Queen used to visit Andrew and Sarah. Um, at Royal Lodge in, in Windsor. And I think uh, it was, I suppose it's quite telling and it, um, that that Andrew and Sarah were both invited not only to the royal family standing on Christmas, but also to the dinner table. And I think this might be the first time that Sarah has uh, been to the dinner table um, since the divorce. So that marks a really important shift. And also this kind of separation between Andrew being a member of the family, but not being a working member of the royal family. And we've seen lots of headlines about Charles kicking Andrew out of Buckingham Palace. Um, he, he hasn't kicked him out. It's basically that he's not going to be a, a working royal. I think what you could say, more or less, is that you know Charles has decided that there's no return for Andrew being a working royal, therefore the residual staff that he did have in Buckingham Palace, the office space, has now gone. So he hasn't kicked him out, he's just basically um, said it's, you know, it's very unlikely that you're going to return to royal duties. Not impossible, but very unlikely. Therefore, it's not justifiable keeping residual office space or even residual office staff. So on the one hand, we see Andrew, um, I think, fate sealed in terms of not returning to royal life, um, not having those offices, that presence in Buckingham Palace. But we do see him involved at the family Christmas. War A lot of people thought he wouldn't be walking to Sandringham. He did. We didn't see Sarah walking to church. And of course, a lot of people are maybe speculating whether or not there might be a, a remarriage on the cards for Andrew and Sarah. Who knows? Who knows? But we didn't see Sarah on the day, but we did see Andrew, still a valued member of the family. And I think Charles um, was keen to make that point and, that, and have that separation between working royals and family member. So I think that was, um, that was something. Also, it was nice to see all the Cambridge children for the first time on the Sandringham Walk. Of course, um, Charlotte uh, and George have, have done it previously, but it was the first time to see little Prince Louis, who was wearing shorts, and I'm sure his legs were very cold on the day, because <laughs> it has been cold here in the UK. But it was nice to see them all together. And didn't the Cambridge family as a unit look absolutely spectacular? I mean, we can only dream, can't we? We can only dream as looking as coordinated and clean. I mean, how did those children keep so clean? I do not know. Uh, but they all looked absolutely gorgeous. And aren't the children growing up? George is looking older and older and older every time. Charlotte's looking. Um, a lot of people are speculating who she looks like. I, I mean, she does look like Sarah Chateau, uh, Princess Margaret's daughter. She does definitely resemble um, her. And of course, in turn, Sarah looks like the Queen. So a lot of people are saying that Charlotte resembles the Queen. I can still see Diana in, in Charlotte. And I think, you know, of course, as children's faces, uh, ages change, their face changes as well. I, I'm kind of seeing this kind of like trio mix of, of um, the Princess of Wales, Diana and, and the Queen. So that's kind of what I'm seeing at the moment. Please let me know in the comments who you think Charlotte looks like. Um, and yeah, I just thought they looked gorgeous. And the, my favourite, favourite, favourite outfit uh, of all the royals at church uh, on Christmas Day was the Princess of Wales. She looked outstanding in that muted green, the hat. She looked absolutely 100% stunning. If, if I could get that outfit and fit into it, I would. It's, it was simply, simply stunning. 
my second favourite outfit uh, was uh, Princess Beatrice. I really like Princess Beatrice's coat with the faux fur cuffs. I thought that looked really spectacular. I think she looked very, very good. And of course, Beatrice and Eugenie brought their husbands as well. Um, also, they brought um, Wolf, Wolfie, um, of course, um, Beatrice's step stepson, who it's been revealed that the mother is really pleased um, that that he is living with with his dad in the UK. Um, so there we there we have that little revelation. I wasn't so keen on Eugenie's outfit. She was wearing that kind of white oversized kind of cream coloured coat. I wasn't, I don't know, it was kind of a bit shapeless. Although again, there has been some speculation over whether or not she might be pregnant. So we're going to have to wait and see um, on whether or not Eugenie's pregnant. It might explain the coat, but I wasn't really mad on the coat, I have to say. I mean, it was cold and it did look comfy. It looked like a very comfortable coat, but I wasn't keen on it. It wasn't wasn't my favourite outfit. Camilla always looks spectacular. I've always admired Camilla's fashion, actually. The hats she wears, the coats, um, you know, her hair is becoming, you know, quite iconic and on brand as well. I, you know, I'm sure if I had long hair, I might try and emulate the Camilla flick because it does go very nice with tiaras. Let me just take a sip of my coffee. It's gingerbread coffee today. Ah, oh, that's lovely. Um, but yeah, I loved Camilla's outfit. Um, King Charles kind of wore what he normally does, so I thought. So I thought that was, um, you know, no change there. He wore, wore that kind of camel-coloured coat. I'm I'm going to have to get myself a King Charles camel-coloured coat. Uh, style icon Charles. Uh, I'm waving the flag for the style icon that is Charles. We saw him talking privately. Um, I think it was Zara and Mike he was spotted talking to. So obviously maybe talking about I'm a celeb. I don't know. But it shows that there's a really good relationship between um, Zara and Mike and King Charles. So I thought that was good. And it's about time, in my opinion, that um, Beatrice and Eugenie were made working royals in some capacity. So I really enjoyed seeing the royals at Christmas. And then, of course, they went back to Sandringham to enjoy their, their festive Christmas dinner. One change that I did notice was that Camilla was seen on Boxing Day driving to Wood Farm. Now, Wood Farm is the house where, on the Sandringham estate, where um, Philip kind of retired to. That's where he was. Do you remember when he had that um, car accident in his Range Rover? Um, that he was driving out of Wood Farm then. So uh, the royals like a more informal, relaxed Boxing Day dinner, and they normally have it at Wood Farm before going on um, the Boxing Day hunt. Now, whether or not you're a, you know, a fan of, of hunting or not, it does go on. They are country folk. Um, anything that is caught is used um, at Sandringham to feed people. So um, sustainable hunting, but it is a royal family tradition, whether you like it or not. Um, and one thing that is different is that Camilla normally is the first to leave on Christmas Day, and she goes to her own family. She goes to her own house, Ray Mill in Gloucestershire, which is not far uh, from Charles's um, house, which is now actually owned technically by William. So Highgrove, Charles's former residence, is actually now is part of the Duchy of Cornwall. Of course, William is the Duke of Cornwall now. So we're still not sure whether or not Charles is using Highgrove. I don't think William has any desires or sights set on Highgrove. So the most likely scenario is that William will be allowing his father um, to retain Highgrove, although it will still be owned by, uh, by William. And he may even be, have to lease it out to Charles. I don't know. So we have to wait and see exactly what happens with Highgrove. I'm sure we'll find out in time. But normally, Camilla goes to Ray Mill um, on Boxing Day, no, on Christmas Day, after all the celebrations, and she spends time with, with her son and daughter and grandchildren. But it has been reported uh, that, that her children and her grandchildren have been at Sandringham, or at the very least, they attended Boxing Day um, at Wood Farm. So, and we know that because we've seen Camilla 
driving um, at on on actual Boxing Day. So we know that she's there. I think that's another big change. Is that um, is that? Let me just dismiss something that's popped up on, popped up on my screen. There we go. Um, is that Charles has embraced and brought into the fold Camilla's family? No, we are not going to see the start of the Parker Bowles dynasty. But I think it's really nice to have that kind of extended family, and it shows that Charles is really, really um, valuing them. Uh, right, I think I have. Spoken about this Sandringham Christmas. If you do have any questions, please uh, let me know about that. We saw, uh, of course, the pre recorded um, carol service hosted by the Princess of Wales. I thought that was really lovely. And it was nice to see, um, you know, this kind of unity of the royal family. They all, all the family members, got behind the Princess of Wales and supported her. There was a little bit of speculation as to why was there a theme, a colour theme theme being set because they were all wearing this kind of scarlety kind of colour. Um, not quite sure how to describe it, but it's kind of like like a strawberry, raspberry kind of colour. Um, lots of the royals wore this colour, apart from I think Camilla who wore white, or was it Sophie Wessex who wore white? Anyway, um, so many of the you know ladies wore this kind of colour. William wore, wore it in the time. And some people were saying that it was in response to what Harry and Meghan said in their Netflix documentary thing um, about, um, about royal women not being able to wear the same colour. So was it, was it a little dig at Meghan that they all wore the same colour? Well, I don't know. All I do know is that I think that, was, um, the sec that documentary had only been out a couple of days. So it wouldn't have given much time for them to change outfit. So I'm thinking that there was more a kind of colour message that went out um, to kind of set that kind of Christmassy tone. It was a very Christmassy colour. Um, but it certainly did show that the royal family females can wear the same colour, regardless of whether or not um, whether or not it was in response to what Meghan said and claimed. It certainly showed that, you know, that it isn't true and that members of the royal family can wear the same colour um, if they should want to. Right, I'm going to uh, say hello to everyone who is, of course, just joining. Um, Christine says, I heard the king has left Sandringham and gone to Burke Hall. Um, well, whether or not he has, that's what he normally does. He and Camilla normally go to Burke Hall uh, for Hogmanay, which, of course, is the Scottish New Year. So Burke Hall is kind of on... The Balmoral estate it's, it's not a million miles away from Balmoral of course Balmoral is thousands of acres um, it was formerly a, um, the resident a residence in Scotland of the Queen Mother um, Charles inherited it off her and it's been a favorite residence of his that he has not given up now that he is king so yes it is expected uh, whether he's gone now uh, or whether he's going to go in a few days. I would imagine that he probably is there now. I don't think he'd have stayed around in Sandringham. Of course, the Queen, uh, the late Queen, used to uh, stay at Sandringham until February. I think there has been reports that Charles is not going to do that. He is going to go to Burkhall. He's probably there now. And um, that that he is, he's going to return to, to royal duties way before February. And of course, the Queen used to stay at Sandringham until um, until her accession day, uh, and of course the the Queen used to keep her Christmas decorations up until she actually left in February. So there's all talk about you know people taking down their Christmas tree decorations. The Queen used to keep them up until February. I'm just saying, um, but yes, normally Charles and Camilla go to Burke Hall for Hogmanay, and it doesn't look like that is going to change or has changed now that he's king. I think I've missed a few comments. So I'm going to kind of, uh, I think I've missed quite a few comments. So I'm going to scoot back up. Um, Witchy Z says, looking forward to the coronation of King Charles III next year. How exciting it is to see the senior royals and other members of the family wearing their robes and coronets. I did have one question about that, saying, will all of the, um, all the peerages be there? Now, with it being a stripped back coronation, see, I didn't think it was going to be next year. I thought it might have been the year after, but early in the year, just to give them time uh, to organise. But 
it was since decided that it was going to be a more stripped back coronation. I don't think it's going to be stripped back in terms of the pomp and the circumstance, but just the scale of it. So we might not see um, the capacity um, that there was at the Queen's coronation because they actually built extra stands to accommodate a few more thousand people. That might not happen. So in turn, it might happen. It might not happen. We haven't seen the plans. So in terms of the peerages, I imagine many people that hold, you know, an earldom, a dukedom, all the peerages probably will be invited. But if there isn't enough space, I actually think that Charles might invite more sort of members of the public. I mean, ooh, there's a message on my screen. Let me just get rid of that. It was, it was going to turn the power off, so I'll just change it. We can get that lovely, lovely fire back. Um, so it depends upon the capacity because I think you know they're going to want family there. Uh, they are going to want some some peerages there. They are going to want, uh, of course, political people there. They are going to invite heads of state and kings and queens from around the world. There's only so much capacity, and I do think that Charles is going to want to have some regular people there as well, some normal civilians, people that work in the National Health Service, you know, all these, these services, maybe some marginal, marginalised people. Who knows? Maybe people from, you know, the Prince's Trust as well. So I think it depends upon the capacity. But in terms of the pomp and circumstance, that will still be there. We're still going to see the St Edward's crown lowered on his head. Um, Stephanie says, I love Queen Camilla's hair for a uh, for a duchess and a 70 year old but not for wearing a tiara as queen put them on catherine um i actually think um camilla's hair being quite big and bouffant it suits the very large stature tiaras um the big honeycomb tiara that she normally wears that was of course the late queen mother's not the late queen's the late queen mother's tiara that she's worn for years is a particular favorite of mine it just suits that really big bouffant hair um lady buckingham says i hope the uh oh the the gales of great britain stay away for a while i would love to see it oh oh right i'm not quite sure i'm getting your comment but there was you just r reminded me of something that i read about and that was that charlotte was going to be made the duchess of edinburgh I think I'm calling that story out as a complete and utter lie. Uh, of course, the Dukedom of Edinburgh, formerly held by Prince Philip, the Queen's husband, um, was actually promised to the Earl of Wessex, Edward. Um, that hasn't happened yet. And there's been a lot of speculation over what would happen to that title. Has Charles decided not to give it him? Uh, is he going to go against what was promised? At the time of Edward and Sophie's marriage, is it going to be given to Princess Charlotte um, so that she would be the Duchess of Edinburgh in her own right? I think all we're seeing is that we are waiting for a special occasion, um, whether it be a special occasion for King Charles or a special occasion for Edward and Sophie, maybe um, a wedding anniversary or something, and then he will bestow that title on that occasion as kind of like a present if you like. Um, so it is in his gift to give. And I think he will honour what was promised to Edward upon uh, his marriage to Sophie. Of course, that was all pre-agreed with the Queen. Um, so I think that will happen in due course. It could even happen prior to the coronation as a way to kind of celebrate the coronation. Um, I don't think it will go to Charlotte purely because the obvious title that she will be given is the Princess Royal. Now, of course, she can't be Princess Royal currently because there is a, a current incumbent, Princess Anne. But as soon as anything, you know, happens to Princess Anne, that title will be available to be given out. Um, and I think Charlotte um, kind of suits being Princess Royal uh, a lot. Um, so, so no, I don't think that that title has has been. Um, has been given to, or promised to Charlotte, I think it will go to the Wessexes. Uh, yes, Anne's husband was there too. Um, Twilla was really hoping to see Sarah Ferguson with her crew. 
I love, I do like Fergie. You know, whether you love her or hate her, she is very vibrant and she does have that kind of personality. So I would have liked to have seen her there. Uh, but maybe, maybe in a few years. Uh, Christine says, I hope to see Camilla in the George the Fourth diadem. Again, lots of talk about whether or not she will wear the, con well, she'll be crowned with the consort's crown, which features, of course, um, a diamond which has questionable heritage, shall we say. Um, and personally, I kind of, I don't think she'll be crowned with the George the Fourth diadem, purely because it is a diadem. The, the clue is in the name. It's not a crown. When you are crowned, you are crowned with a crown. A diadem is not a crown. It's a diadem. So I can't see her being crowned in the George the Fourth diadem. I can see her wearing it to the coronation. Uh, I can see her wearing it to state opening of parliaments in the same way that the, that the late Queen did, but I can't see her being crowned in it. But there is the problem of um, the Queen's uh, crown. Uh, it does have this diamond in it, uh, which of course has questionable heritage. What will they do? Will they replace it with another stone? Will they you know, fashion another crown entirely? Who knows from the diamonds that are, that are already set there? We really don't know. Um, Charles, of course, um, the um, imperial state crown, the one with the red, big prince's uh, ruby on the front, or, or the back, I should say, that has actually left the jewel house, the Tower of London. It is being resized. The arches on it were actually lowered um, so that it fit better for the queen. Um, if you look at photos of her father wearing that, that crown, the arches were actually higher. It was a taller crown. So it's expected that the arches are being rehired to their full um, to their full stature, and also perhaps the how it fits around the head. So it is actually being resized. And um, Stephanie says King Charles is. Uh, Consistency leans onto his faith in his speeches. Yes, um, of course, following in the Queen's uh, tradition, the messages, of course, do have a Christian relevance because, of course, it's a Christmas message, the Christmas celebration. Yes, it is hard to still believe that, that the Queen is gone. It doesn't feel real even now. Um... I'm just kind of scanning down. Um, Sterling says, what do you make of the Top Gear? Oh, um, guys, comments, even those who aren't fans of uh, Meghan and Harry. Um, Jeremy Clarkson did make some remarks, uh, which he has since apologised uh, for. And I think, I think for me, it all boils down to not necessarily what the remarks were. You know, we do live in a freedom of speech uh, democracy. So he's entitled to his opinions. I think what it all boils down to is the choice that was made behind the scenes to publish it um, in the medium in which it was put out there. Now, of course, uh, in this day and age, people can self-publish. You know, I I am self-publishing now. I'm on YouTube. It's my channel. I'm talking about what I want to talk about. I'm saying what I want to say. Jeremy Clarkson could have tweeted what he said. He could have um, you know, made a YouTube video or an Instagram or a TikTok. He didn't. He wrote an article that was then okayed and, and published. So I think it's it's an issue of publishing. Um, but again, we do live in a freedom of choice democracy. And, you know, he is entitled to his opinions, whatever they are. It's just questionable of, um, of the that particular article got okayed to be put out to the general public. Uh, but of course, Jeremy Clarkson could have self-published if he, if he wanted to. Stephanie says, love Sandringham, got to visit this year. Oh, I hope you had an amazing time. Uh, young Prince Louis stole the walkabout. Yes, he's a very cheeky chappy. Reminds me very much of Prince Harry. Uh, which is, he says, what are your thoughts on the title? Oh, I've, I've just read that. I've, I've done that one. <laughs> I covered it. Um, uh, Stephanie says, family is family and the public should not be asking the monarch to publicly deny their family. Prince Andrew is not on the public payroll and that should be enough. And I think the actions of 
him not having his offices in the palace does show that. Uh, Patricia says Charlotte looks like the Princess of Wales, as in Kate. <laughs> um, lots of people saying who they think um, who they think Charlotte looks like. I won't read all of them because I'm trying to get down the comments. Uh, Twiller says I was surprised to see Wolfie, but glad he made it and hope he enjoyed his holiday with his new family. Uh, yeah, and I do hope he got to see Mom as well. Kate uh, Sunder says Camilla did look beautiful. She did. She did. Uh, yes, you may have seen cats in the background. There's, there's Bo around and, and there is Rory around in, in the background. Um, let's have a look. Geo, hello, says you ought to be invited to some of their private functions. Yes, I should. I think I, I agree with you. I should be invited. Your love of them genuinely and you will be such an added value to them. Well, I mean, I could step in. I mean, you know, if, if they fancy a day off, I could... I could, you know, visit a hospital or I could open something. I mean, I'd turn up at the opening of, of an envelope. You know, if I got invited to it, I, I'd be there, you know. I'm sure I could deputise for one of them. Um, right, I'm just going down. Um, Twiller says, I, I've often wondered why English and something others call the jobs of the royals roles. To me, the job is more serious than a role should be called the job. Well, actually, <laughs> actually, actually, the only royal family uh, member that actually has a predefined role is actually the sovereign. It's the monarch. Um, they do have a role. All the other members of the family technically do not have a role. In other words, they don't have to do anything. Prince Charles, when he was Prince Charles, um, when, he was the, when he was the Prince of Wales, doesn't have to do anything. William, now he is Prince of Wales, doesn't have to do anything. He could literally just live off the Duchy of Cornwall income, run the Duchy and do absolutely zero. He could go abroad. He could, you know, he could just wait to be king. Um, you know, Princess Anne, Edward, all the other members of the royal family, they do not have um, a, they do not have a predetermined role um, within the institution, within that family. They do it because they want to. They do it because they have this sense of duty. And it's the sense of duty um, that because obviously they know that they are very privileged, they know that they have money and luxuries and that they are being looked after, they have protection, and they want to give something back. I think they, you know, they do feel this, this sense of duty. Um, and that is what you're seeing. You're not seeing a role, you're seeing, you're seeing someone playing out their duty, uh, Prince, which is why Prince William does it completely different to how uh, Charles did it. And you'll see, you know, in time, William being a very different Prince of Wales, because there, there isn't a role. You almost have to make a role. Uh, when uh, King Charles was Prince of Wales, he, he had the Prince of Wales um, title for the longest in, in British history. Therefore, he had to create a role for himself. And that is what you see with all members of the royal family. They create their own role. Um, P Pacific says, in the 19, um, 1990s, Fergie badmouthed the royal family in an Oprah TV interview. Um, not nice at all. I don't think she necessarily badmouthed them. I think I, I can't recall the exact words of the interview, but I remember watching it, I think, at the time. And this, of course, was when Sarah was no longer a member of the royal family. She had divorced. She had had her title taken away from her. She had had the HRH stripped from her. She was no longer royal. She didn't have HRH on retention. She didn't have it and was just choosing not to use it. She lost it fully. She was no longer royal. She was divorced. She was no longer the Duchess of York. She was Sarah, Duchess of York, using Duchess of York as more of a, a surname, if you like. So if you're trying to make the comparison between Harry and Meghan, it is, of course, entirely different. Sarah was completely removed from the family in titles in, in at the time, I think where she was living, she was living in America. Of course, she did come back to the UK and she did uh, continue living 
with Andrew at Royal Lodge. But I think at the time she was completely 100% removed, um, completely disassociated with the royal family. And that kind of, I suppose, informed her choices in what she could do. So if you're trying to make that link, the situation was different. It's not comparable. Um, Peter says Andrew's office goes with his job. He's lost his job. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what we saw. Um, right, H. A. Bracken says I think after Victoria didn't do anything to prepare um, her heir, the rest of the sovereigns have tried to prepare for the next in line uh, for, for royal duty. I mean, again, it's it's another misconception that there is like royal family training. It's very much on the job training. Uh, I think it was um, Prince Edward. Um, Edward Wessex, who actually said that he remembers his first uh, time or, you know, time in the in the public on a first royal walkabout. And he wasn't given any instruction. He wasn't told what to do. He wasn't told how to behave. He was literally pushed out there by, by the Queen and Philip and said, there you go, you know, just do it. And that's kind of what you do see. You don't really see um, training as such. It's kind of very much on the job. You you learn it as you go, which again fits in with what I've said about the, that there isn't an actual role to learn. However, with the air, you do see uh, the air these days accompanying the monarch on you know certain um, certain royal visits, and you know you you saw certainly Charles spending a lot more time with the Queen in particular over the last year. Um, because I do think that the royal family saw that the Queen um, was coming to the end of... I'm just trying to move my legs. You did see that she was coming to the end uh, of her life. And I think that was... I'm just sitting down so I can stretch out my legs. Um, you do see that she was coming to the end of her life. I don't think they were expecting her to lose her life at that point. Um, I do think that... There was all the expectation of the Queen returning to Windsor after the summer holidays. Um, and of course, Charles was spending a lot more time with the Queen. We definitely saw a lot of tying up of loose ends over the past year. We saw the Queen finally addressing the issue of whether or not Camilla should be Queen Consort. Uh, you know, we, we saw pretty much the tying up of um, Prince Andrew's role within the royal family. We did see a lot of loose ends being tied up. Um, they knew that she was on her way out, uh, but I don't think they were expecting it when it happened. Again, there was a lot of speculation, um, mostly from social media, um, from people trying to claim that the Queen had this illness or that illness. I don't think it was. Um, I don't think it was anything particularly um, sinister, if you like. And But also, there was no need to hide anything more sinister, if it had have been that the Queen had had some kind of serious illness, whether it be a cancer or or anything like that, then why hide it? It's not it's not shameful to have cancer. It's not shameful to have a life limiting illness if one comes on. Um, I don't even think it would have been for issues of of privacy, especially as we actually got to see the death certificate, which said old age. Um, if, if she had have died of anything more sinister, it would have been on the death certificate because, of course, that death certificate was never intended to be seen. It was only because the newspapers um, found a loophole that because the Queen died in Scotland um, that, that the death certificate was actually published. It wouldn't have been published if, if it would have been in England that she had passed away. And, of course, the royal doctor involved wouldn't have wanted to have lied. So I don't think there's any conspiracy because it would have harmed his profession. It would have harmed his individual career. So I don't think there was anything more sinister. My own, <clears throat> I did say in my Christmas message that we lost my own grandmother this year. And she went very much the same way that the Queen did. So I, I'm kind of talking from a little bit of experience here over the past year prior to her death, um, she deteriorated, slowed down, um, mobility issues, and then eventually it was, um, it was a heart defect, and my nan passed away from um, the, 
that just her heart wasn't able to cope with her body and then she slowly slipped away um, and it was quite quick at the end um, and I can see so so much of a similarity in how the Queen went we saw the slowing down we saw the mobility issues so I think you know like the royal family and my family we knew that it was getting to the end of life but we didn't know when um, I think at the end the Queen had either a stroke or literally heart failure at the end um, and the reason why I say that is because I recognise so much in how the Queen deteriorated in my own grandmother. Also, um, I think if she had have had something serious like a cancer, just think about all the people that you may have either seen on TV or in the newspapers or family members who have a serious illness like cancer. If you were about to die of cancer two days prior to your death, would you have been able to have done what the Queen did, i.e. standing up unaided, um, doing official official duties? She even had guests. She had guests at Balmoral. Uh, I think it was a, a member of the clergy as well. So she had guests. Um, she was still doing her red boxes. She saw an outgoing and ingoing prime minister. She was photographed standing on her feet. If you were going to die um, two days in two days from a serious illness such as that, would you be able to have looked as good as the Queen did? I know the Queen looked old. I know the Queen didn't look particularly well. But would you have been able to have done what she did? My own nan had had the bruising in the hands where they, they take blood samples and things to do tests and blah, 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 blah. So I think that explains the hands. I don't see anything sinister. Um, and certainly nothing has been confirmed about any type of cancer. So I would just say be very, very careful who you listen to, what you read. Uh, Twitter is a complete cesspit of, of morals and all that kind of thing. So, so no, I don't think the Queen would have been able to have performed as she did up to the point that she did. Um, and that's all I'm going to say on it. Right. Um, mm -mm. And I think we're going to leave it there for now. So I will be back. I am going to be doing a lot more um, Royal Family live chats, pre-recorded things, um, shorts, all kinds of different content. So please make sure you are subscribed. Uh, and I will probably be wearing a different tiara the next time you see me. So if you've enjoyed today's video, please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to share on social media. And of course, do hit the bell so you know whenever I upload a new video. So from me to you all, and goodbye.